हमारे और आपके साथ इस समय संजय सिंह सर खड़े हैं संजय सिंह सर भारत के सभी बड़े संस्थानों में आई स्टूडेंट्स को इंग्लिश माध्यम में तैयारी कराते रहे हैं दिल्ली हो पुणे हो मुंबई हो इवन पांडिचेरी के भी बड़े संस्थानों में एक लंबे समय से वर्ष 2012 के बाद से ही इंग्लिश मीडियम के छात्र छात्राओं को पढ़ाते रहे हैं विशेष रूप से सर का सब्जेक्ट रहा है पॉलिटी और इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन लेकिन सर का मतलब प्रतिभा इतनी बेजोड़ है कि ये केवल पॉलिटी और आई पर ही पकड़ नहीं रखते हैं बल्कि सभी विषयों पर इनकी अच्छी पकड़ है घबराइए मत यहाँ पे ये सिर्फ पॉलिटी और इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन के अध्यापक रहेंगे लेकिन सर इंग्लिश इंग्लिश भी बहुत अच्छी पढ़ाते हैं विशेष रूप से जो कंपलसरी सब्जेक्ट होता है आपका इंग्लिश वो भी बहुत अच्छा पढ़ाते हैं मैथमेटिक्स पर सर की बहुत ज़बरदस्त पकड़ है मल्टी टैलेंटेड है ये तो मैं चाहता हूँ कि सर इंग्लिश माध्यम के छात्रों को विशेष रूप से इंग्लिश मीडियम के लिए हम बात कर रहे हैं आई प्रारंभिक परीक्षा मुख्य परीक्षा के लिए फाउंडेशन बैच एक चलाएं और इस बैच की घोषणा बहुत जल्द की जाएगी पूरे देश के इंग्लिश माध्यम के छात्र छात्राओं से मैं कहना चाहता हूं कि अगर आप ऑनलाइन माध्यम से प्री कमेंस की तैयारी करना चाहते हैं यानी फाउंडेशन का निर्माण करना चाहते हैं तो हमारे इस इंग्लिश मीडियम के ऑनलाइन बैच में आप प्रवेश कर सकते हैं प्रवेश कब से होगा इसकी घोषणा शीघ्र की जाएगी सब कुछ आने वाले 10 से 15 दिनों में क्लियर हो जाएगा मैं चाहता हूं कि हमारे इस फाउंडेशन बैच जो कि वर्ष 2021 के लिए होगा मैं फिर से बता दूं कि जो फाउंडेशन बैच स्टार्ट होने जा रहा है वो 2021 की परीक्षा के लिए होगी आई प्रारंभिक और मुख्य परीक्षा के लिए इसमें इसका नाम ही है फाउंडेशन बैच जैसा नाम है बिल्कुल ये बैच वैसा ही है यानी अगर कोई बारहवीं पास स्टूडेंट अभी से आई के लिए खुद को डेवलप करना चाहता है धीरे धीरे समझना चाहता है कि अभी से क्या करें जरूरी नहीं कि हम जब ग्रेजुएट ग्रेजुएट हो जाएं तभी आई की तैयारी शुरू करें ऐसा करने पर हमारे ग्रेजुएशन के तीन साल नष्ट हो जाते हैं ना हम कोई ऑप्शनल सब्जेक्ट सोच पाते हैं ना हमारा जी में कोई रुचि होता है ना ही हम करेंट अफेयर्स में रुचि रख पाते हैं लेकिन जरा सोचिए कि अगर आप स्नातक कर रहे हैं बारहवीं पास हैं और ग्रेजुएशन अभी कर रहे हैं हो सकता है फर्स्ट ईयर में हो हो सकता है आप सेकेंड ईयर में हो और अभी से आपको एक अच्छी टीम का साथ मिल जाए जो इंग्लिश मीडियम में आपके प्रारंभिक और मुख्य परीक्षा प्री कम मेन्स की तैयारी करवाए और एक अप्रोच डेवलप करें एनालिटिकल अप्रोच आप एक आई अधिकारी की तरह अभी से सोचने लगे क्योंकि भारत में तैयारी के नाम पर भीड़ बहुत ज़्यादा है तो इस भीड़ से अलग हटकर सच में अगर आप सही दिशा में बढ़ना चाहते हैं तो संजय सिंह सर के नेतृत्व में जो टीम है उसका साथ पकड़ लेना निश्चित रूप से भविष्य में आपके लिए हित कर रहेगा तो जितनी भी फैकल्टी है इस फैकल्टी से आपका परिचय आने वाले दिनों में होगा शुरुआत हो रही है संजय सिंह सर से संजय सिंह सर आज इंग्लिश मीडियम में आई परीक्षा की तैयारी पर एक लेक्चर देंगे मेरा ख्याल है कि आप सभी लोगों को आज संजय सिंह के लेक्चर को जरूर सुनना चाहिए और निवेदन है कि इंग्लिश मीडियम के सभी अभ्यर्थी चाहे वो बारहवीं पास हों स्नातक कर रहे हों स्नात ग्रेजुएट हो चुके हों एस परीक्षा की भी तैयारी कर रहे हों आज दौर ऐसा चल रहा है कि एस में न परीक्षाएँ हो रही हैं न ही सिलेक्शन हो रहा है मैं हमेशा कहता हूँ कि एस से बेहतर है आप अपने आप को हमेशा अंडर एस्टिमेट किए हैं एसएससी में बहुत से ऐसे लड़के मैंने देखा हूं कि अपार प्रतिभा है एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डनरी होते हैं मैथ्स तो इतना तगड़ा होता है वो केवल एक मैथ्स तो एक पक्ष है बहुत ज़्यादा टैलेंटेड होते हैं एसएससी में बच्चे अगर अभी से अपने आप को आई परीक्षा के लिए तैयारी करें तो हो सकता है वो आई एस कर दें और सबसे बड़ी बात है कि आई का रिजल्ट हर साल आता है एस का रिजल्ट एक अंतहीन सपना आप देखे जा रहे हैं आप आई की तैयारी करिए तो मैंने कहा बारहवीं पास ग्रेजुएट हो चुके लोग एसएससी की तैयारी करने वाले बैंक पीओ की तैयारी करने वाले और तमाम खाली बैठे लोग जो कि कुछ बनना चाहते हैं या बनना चाहते थे अब भी हमारे टारगेट विद आलोक के ऑनलाइन इंस्टीट्यूट में इस फाउंडेशन बैच में शामिल हो जाए और इस फाउंडेशन बैच के बारे में या इंग्लिश मीडियम में आई परीक्षा की तैयारी के बारे में बाकी बातें संजय सर आपको बताएंगे मैं चाहता हूं कि आप संजय सर की बात को इन्हीं के द्वारा सुने 
संजय सिंह थैंक यू सो मच सर हेलो गाइस व्हाट्सअप दिस इज संजय ठाकुर आई एम एन एडुकेटर ऑफ इंडियन पॉलिटी एंड कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जाम्स प्रिपरेशन फ्रेंड्स आई होल हर्टेडली वेलकम यू ऑल एट वन ऑफ द लीडिंग ऑनलाइन एडुकेशन प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज वी सर्विस अदर कम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स प्रिपरेशन कॉल टारगेट विथ आ लोक यूट्यूब चैनल गाइस इट शुड बी नोन टू ऑल ऑफ यू द टू मंथ्स एगो वी हैव स्टार्टेड बेसिकली अ बेस्ट सोलली डेडिकेटेड फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज हिंदी मीडियम स्टूडेंट्स एंड आफ्टर द सक्सेसफुल लॉन्च ऑफ दैट हिंदी मीडियम बेस नाउ वी आर वेरी एंथुसियास्टिक टूवर्ड्स लॉन्चिंग येट एंड एन अदर बेस बट दैट बेस वुड बी बेसिकली ऑफ इंग्लिश मीडियम बेच today's session is not based on any particular subject no doubt my role would be simply to teach you the subject like indian polity and constitution along with international relationship only but today i have come in front of you in order to let you know about your preparation strategy my target is to ensure the casement of one or english medium audience here i would let you know about all sorts of preparation strategy from when you should start preparing for this examination what's about the eligibility criteria for this examination suppose you are a beginner what should be your strategy to give a pace to your preparation if you have already given one or two attempts then again after math of that what sort of strategy you should follow etc etc see <clears throat> it is obvious to all of you that civil services examination is basically you know a dream for almost all the students who are aspiring to be a part of government job some of you might be preparing for other government job exams like uh, banking services examination examination conducted by different selection boards like staff selection commission board some of you might be preparing for state public service commission examination anyway i'm going to provide you a framework under which what should be discussed today as far as the preparation for ias examination is concerned let's have a look upon the board <clears throat> here we would discuss four to five you know important points which are almost needed for each and every student which is imperative to be followed by almost all the students in due course of their journey for preparing this examination see some questions might be automatically confronted in your mind that from when we should start preparing for this examination you might have heard from different different individuals the different different responses for example somebody can say you that you should start preparing for this examination only when you will be in your final year of graduation some other might opine you that in order to be a civil servant or in order to carry out your preparation for civil services examination in future first of all you should go for engineering services examination first of all you should after completion of your plus 2 standard examination you should go for preparing the engineering exams medical exams etc etc and once you become the part of those examination then only you can start preparing for civil services examination these are some sorts of myths i would frankly say you these are the myths you know no specific criteria is required no background is required no matter from which background you are coming from you all are equitably you know eligible to be the part of this examination you can go across preparing for this examination no problem see first thing from when
one should he start preparing for civil services exam it will be the first question to be addressed today okay in this particular session only second question how long it will take to master the preparation third one whether once background matters or not okay these are some burning question with by and less confront each and every aspirant especially those aspirants or those students rather can say who are just pursuing their plus 2 standard course they are yet to take admission in or suppose some some of them have passed plus 2 and they are about to take admission in under graduation program you know 3 years graduation program they started pondering over about civil services exam preparation and in due course of you know thinking over preparing for this examination these sorts of questions you know may confront them so my motive is to address these questions properly in today's session fourth one is what is the civil services all about fifth one is what's the difference between csc conducted by upsc and state pscs and sixth question would be what's about the different sorts of eligibilities or you can say what sorts of eligibility criteria are required for this examination eligibilities and seventh one is popular references okay popular references means what's about the different sources of reference to be opted for in due course of preparing this examination so guys in today's session i would try my best to cater all these seven facets all these seven issues in a crystal clear manner so let's have a look upon each and every facet one by one so first of all from when one should start preparing for this examination see here two things you should always remember first one is in order to take civil services examination or in order to aspire before civil services examination the minimum age eligibility criteria required is 21 years okay first of all you should have a look upon age the minimum age is 21 years means if you have not completed the age of 21 years 
you won't be allowed to take part in civil services examination. No matter whether you are talking about the civil services examination conducted by the Union Public Service Commission or state civil services examinations conducted by provincial civil services board. Okay. One thing more. The upper age limit, I am talking about in the context of general category aspirants. Okay. 32 years. Means if you are a candidate coming from general category, you would be allowed to take part in examination only when you have completed the age of 21 years and you should not exceed the age limit of 32 years. Okay. Within this age group, you can take this examination for a maximum number of 6 times, 6. Hence, you will be provided a total of 6 attempts. Okay, 6 attempts. If you are coming from OBC category, you would be provided a relaxation in ACE for a maximum time period of 3 years and accordingly your attempts would also be increased by 3. So, you can say for OBC category students, they can take this examination for a maximum time of 6 plus 3 that is 9 attempts. So, there are altogether 9 attempts conferred on OBC category students and accordingly SCs and STs category students can face the benefit concerning their reservation policy as far as the ACE criteria vis-a-vis -vis attempts criteria are concerned. Okay. So, this is the first thing, but the actual question is from when one should start preparing for this examination because sometimes it has been found that even some of the schooling students started talking about preparing for civil services examination even before they have not uh, passed out their 10th standard examination. That is one thing. See, if I trace back to 5, not 5, you can say 8 to 10 years back, if you went to 8 to 10 years back and let us assume yourself that you are not talking about present, rather you are talking about the time period of 8 to 10 years ago. And at that particular time period, if somebody asks you that from when one should start preparing for civil services examination, okay. If you want the answer to this question from me, I would like to say you that 8 to 10 years ago, my own response could have been that you should start preparing for this examination once you will be in your final year of graduation. But the time has changed, the intensity of competition has been increased, students become more and more conscious towards this examination preparation. So, at this moment, what I would like to recommend you is you should start preparing for this examination in one or other manner only and only after passing out your plus two standard examination means once you become the part of first year of your graduation you should start preparing for this examination okay so after 12th you can go on for preparing this examination. Okay. 8 to 10 years ago, I could not have told you like this. But at this moment, I can frankly tell you that once you completed your plus 2, plus two examination, one, once you have passed your 12th examination and taken admission in first year of graduation, 
you can start preparing for this examination. To start preparing for this examination is one thing and in what manner you have started preparing for this examination is entirely different one. I would discuss it, it elaborately that what would be the mode of your preparation in different phases. Like what should be the mode of preparation when you will be in first year of graduation? What's about your mode of preparation for civil services examination once you have come to final year of your graduation? And for those also who have completed their graduation or post graduation, what should be the right strategies needed to be followed by them in order to crack the examination easily? Okay. So, this is all about the point number one. Here, I would appeal to all the students who have passed their plus two standard examination, who have passed their twelfth examination, they can ponder over about preparing for civil services examination. Okay. Second thing, how long it will take to master the preparation? See, again it depends upon the different phases of your study, the different phases of your preparation. If somebody is an undergraduate student, I can say he can take a proper time period of 3 to 4 years in order to master the preparation. Do not forget, I will also talk about the different components of syllabi of civil services examination, but that would be the part of my next symposium lecture. Okay. In this particular symposium lecture, I will be consistent towards these seven facets only. Right. See, suppose for an undergraduate student or for the undergraduate students, they can take 3 to 4 years. Why? Because they have to value in one hand their preparation for their graduation program and on the other hand their preparation for civil services examination. So, they would have to follow a proper balance between the two. Okay. This is the reason why I am telling you that you can take a time period of 3 to 4 years. It might also be exceeded. Okay. It might also be exceeded to 3 to 5 years, means 1 or 2 years after the completion of your graduation. Right. Suppose, suppose you are a graduate or you are a post graduate, but you are totally nascent for this examination. You have no idea about how to start preparing for civil services examination how to refer the different sources of references corresponding to each and every component of civil services syllabi. I mean to say, let us consider that you are completely a beginner, okay. but it is obvious that you have completed your graduation or post graduation program. For those students, what I would like to suggest to you is, you should make a plan of a minimum of two years. I think this time period would be more than sufficient for a sincere student who is keen to crack the examination, they can master over their preparation. Means a time period of two years is more than sufficient to master your preparation to develop a proper casement over the different components of 
सिविल सर्विसेस सिलेबाई इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन योर अप्रोच इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन योर स्ट्रेटजीज इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन योर एटमोस्फियर आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट एटमोस्फियर सी वंस यू स्टार्ट प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर सच अ ग्लोरियस एग्जामिनेशन वंस यू स्टार्ट आस्पायरिंग फॉर सच अ प्रेस्टिजियस सर्विस सो मेनी पीपल विल कम फॉरवर्ड टू पुल योर लेग्स दे माइट स्टार्ट टॉकिंग नेगेटिव रिगार्डिंग यू बट आई वुड सजेस्ट यू to ensure a proper distance from those negative vibes is spreading guys if somebody demotivates you if somebody shows negative vibes towards you you should shut them out you are not required to entertain those elements just consider them as a fucking bastards the reason is this preparation itself encompasses a good as well as bad times both in due course of the journey of preparing this examination every single day can motivate you every single day can equally demotivate you for example suppose suppose you have framed a road map you have framed a study plan concerning a particular day for example suppose you have decided to go for 6 hours of self study tomorrow and you have decided to cover this much this much section of one or two subjects meanwhile for any reasons if you find yourself unable to achieve your target for the particular day that is basically a failure for you and if you successfully achieved your target that is basically a big success for you but whatever the taste you are enjoying of success or unsuccess don't you think it is self concerned here no extraneous variable is responsible for making you successful in achieving your target or making you unsuccessful in achieving your target for any reason but this is not too bad on many occasions you will find yourself in such type of dilemmatic condition suppose you are going for attending some parties on a particular day it is obvious that for that particular day you won't be able to achieve your target the target concerning your study plan but for that you must remain cautious why because their larger precursions might be disastrous anyway sometimes it might take more than 2 years but considering the periphery of syllabi i have no hesitation to say 2 years time period is sufficient enough now it is up to you in what manner you have to utilize this 2 years time period some students directly opt for self study program some students try to manage this duration by dividing it some of their time period for attending the coaching classes or taking guidance from somewhere and rest of the time period they simply devote for 
their self study. Okay. The ideal way out would be you can give a maximum time period of one year for the coaching classes if you actually wish to attend the coaching classes. Here there is no compulsion. Because coaching classes are not everything to master your preparation. It can be one of the ingredients out of the many ones. Okay. But no doubt, it just acts as positive stimulus for your preparation. These classes might boost your preparation because when you, you know, attend these sorts of classes, you go through your preparation under the guidance of experts and don't you think expert opinions expert guidance always matters it can simply provide a boost in your preparation anyway if you have utilized you have decided to devote one year for attending the coaching classes in order to master over different subjects at least one year time period should be solely devoted for the self-study what for the self-study in this way you can easily understand what i'm willing to say about this particular duration of two years okay next question see our third facet is whether one's background matters or not see what is mean, meant by backgrounds here? As far as the question concerning one's background, I can say here the background simply signifies towards your academic background. Okay, no doubt. Your economic background does also matter, but not much. Your academic background, no doubt, it matters. For this, what you should do? See, if you are pursuing, pursuing plus two courses, you are required to make justice with the syllabi of your plus two examination. Okay. Once you have completed plus two standard examination, and taken admission for undergraduation program, again you are required to do justice with your respective syllabi which you have opted for your graduation program. See, generally what I have seen in northern India where students usually, you know, remain sincere towards their studies. until they qualify their 12th examination. After 12th, they just went across the mode of relaxation because they don't take graduation program seriously. If you don't take your graduation program seriously, the main illness you find after this three years program is it would be completely transmitted into a lethargic entity a sluggy sky and after graduation once you will start preparing for such examination like civil services it would be very much difficult for you to be persistent with long duration self study or classroom studies why because you have already become lethargic because of your non-sincere stance being followed during your undergraduation program. So, what you are required is you should have to give equal focus upon your academic vis-a-vis -vis 
your dream goal for civil services. See, generally it is found that if you are a science student, you are somewhat more sincere as comparison to you, to your humanities or commerce background students or commerce background counterparts. If you focus upon the selection ratio, one can easily found that those students who are coming from sound academic background, their success rate is greater. But it does not mean that if you are not coming from a prestigious university, if you have not passed out your graduation with the subjects like science, math, etc., it does not mean that you are not eligible to be the part of this examination. You cannot crack this examination. No, not at all. You can equally eligible to pass this examination. The only thing required is in due course of framing the time period in order to prepare this examination, in that particular time period, you must be cautious and conscious regarding the preparation. No matter what you used to be in past, what was the pattern of study, what is the pattern of preparation, which was being followed by you in due course of your graduation program, here what is required is you have to give your diligent efforts. You have to give your disciplined efforts. Are you getting my point or not? This is how you can go with preparation for this examination. So, no doubt your background matters, but not much. It is not everything. If you are sincere enough, if you are disciplined enough, if you are persistent in your study, if you are keen to give your diligent efforts towards your study, it would be very much easier. Like the other guys to crack the examination. Anyway. So now I think you would have understood the third point of discussion whether one's background matters or not. So be cautious, try to give equal justice with your academic as well. Anyway, what's all about the civil services? Under this particular facet, we will be discussing about what's about the examination pattern. In very brief, I would like to share with you that civil services examination is basically a three-tier examination. One is just like a screening test that is preliminary examination. Once you crack the preliminary examination, you are allowed to take part in written examination, which is, in, which is in common parlance called as men's examination. And once you qualify the men's examination, you would be called on for interview. And after successfully qualifying all these three tires, you would be ready to be the part of civil services. You know, anyway. We would discuss it later on in an elaborative manner because it will take more time. So, I am just going to skip this point. In next symposium lecture, I will surely dictate all about the civil services examination. Right? Next one. What is the difference between CSE, UPSC and state PSCs? Sometimes the aspirants or basically the beginners I can say, they found themselves in very, you know, bewildering situation whether what is IAS, what is PSC, what is UPSC, sometimes it is called, suppose uh, in spite of using the term like PSC, somebody says PCS. So, what is the difference between CSC, UPSC and PCS? See, both are basically the civil services examination. By cracking this examination, you would be the part of, you know, permanent executive. 
you would be the part of bureaucracy okay but via means of civil services upsc you know you would be a part of big bureaucracy or great bureaucracy and via qualifying psc or pcs you would be a part of lower bureaucracy anyway this civil services examination is basically conducted by union public service commission it encompasses both all india services candidates as well as overseas services candidates that is foreign services central government services etc etc but once you try to as per the examination conducted by state public service commission here pcs means provincial civil services you know these exams are conducted by the state selection boards or provincial selection boards of different different states for example suppose you are planning to be the part of you know uttar pradesh administration for that you have two choices before you one either by crack cracking civil services examination conducted by union public service commission and facing you know uh, the cadre of uttar pradesh once you got the got the you got up uh, cadre you would be the part of uttar pradesh bureaucracy okay but if you decided to be the part of uttar pradesh bureaucracy by cracking uppcs means uttar pradesh public service commission examination again you might join the administrative machinery of uttar pradesh you might be selected for the post of deputy collector you might be selected for the post of you know deputy sp block development officers and so many other officials are also there but by cracking this civil services examination you simply become the part of you know big bureaucracy means if the age is in your favor you can even there is the zenith of indian bureaucracy but that is possible only and only when you have cracked civil services examination conducted by upsc you cannot reach the zenith of indian bureaucracy by cracking state public service commission examination yes you might be the part of lesser bureaucracy okay so both are the civil services examination the only difference between the two is one has the greater domain that is csc upsc this is basically conducted on all india level while pscs or pcs exams are conducted under state level only every state has its own public service commission and according to their suitability they conduct their provincial civil services examinations right so we have also addressed uh, the fifth facet sixth one is eligibility remember for educational qualification point of view your minimum eligibility is you must be a graduate and second one you should remember is you have completed the age of 21 years right seventh one is what's about the popular sources of reference see for subject wise i would suggest you all the possible sources of reference which are needed to master your preparation for civil services examination but for the beginners or particularly i would like to say those students who are in their undergraduate program 
the things to be followed by them are first thing you should have to refer ncrts plus one feeser newspaper in next lecture i would let you know what is meant by the feeser newspapers actually the references like ncrts whether you have to be particular in referring the different texts of ncrts but in brief i would like to say here what is required is you have to follow only 11th and 12th standard ncrts in general and the ncrts of humanities subjects in particular means particularly you have to refer humanities related arts related ncrts viz history geography you know polity economy etc okay so in your first phase of preparation you are required to refer ncrts plus one good quality newspaper more precious you can say one good quality fisher newspaper like right uh, like uh, uh, you can refer the hindu newspaper you can refer the indian express okay the, these two newspapers are basically the more prominent ones you know they are more popular ones in civil services domain okay so this is what the brief discussion upon the different different facets which are needed uh, for the students preparing for this examination or for those students who are willing to start preparing for this examination this examination means uh, uh, today my concern is simply to cater beginners means those students who have yet to begin their preparation for civil services examination one more important thing as i told you earlier even during the beginning of my lecture that at this particular platform which is popularly known as target with alok youtube channel as i told you two months ago we have started a base for civil services but that base was solely dedicated for hindi medium students still that base is going on only two months classes have been gone anyway from this month i'm not specific about the particular date it would be known to you very soon we are going to start a fresh base for english medium students here you will have the best faculties who are highly prominent ones in civil services domain they are related to you know some big civil services of line platforms they are invited here to give you lectures in their respective subjects they are the learned ones they are highly experienced ones and the sign of sure of this program is it would be provided near about 8 to 10 months intensive classroom program the mode of classroom program would be online in nature only supported with all sorts of requisite notes in pdf form or in some other manner your lecture program would also be supplemented with best quality test series question answer discussion session on an average you will be provided the lectures up 3 to 4 hours a day and the sign of show the word which i have used just now is all such facilities would be provided to you in a least possible fee minimum possible fee which you cannot imagine even 
Is it okay? So, okay guys. See you soon. Thank you so much. I wish you all a very happy study. Thank you.